Sophie, tu sais pas où je suis là? Non, toujours pas. Je suis à la mer. Sérieux? Mm -hmm, 40 degrés à l'ombre, au turquoise, petite brise marine. Senti. La chance. Je dis laisse la sangue! Welcome, everybody. Um, it's really great to have so many of you here today. And thanks for being with us to celebrate World Ocean Day and also the launch of the Virtual Blue Decade platform. Um, my name is Julia, and I'm going to moderate today's webinar for you. And we do have a French translation available. So if you want to listen in French, then you can just switch it into the French channel on the bottom of your Zoom window now. Um, and Before we start, we'd like to, well, actually start with something that's really important for us to clarify, because today we're celebrating World Ocean Day, not World Oceans Day. And um, that's something that's really important because we just have one ocean and it's, well, the same unique ocean that I think we all care about and that we all really want to protect. Um, and um, well, that's also why we're launching the Virtual Blue Decade platform today. And the overall vision of our platform is to, um, to bring together the ocean biodiversity and climate action community to well, contribute together to the achievement of the sustainable development goals and to share our ocean knowledge and action with each other. And diversity and inclusion are really important for us because we think that's what really makes us stronger. And that's why that's one of the well, key um, core kind of principles for us that we really want to draw on and to enable collaboration from north to south and uh, west to east. And we really want to make sure that our virtual resources will be equally available for everyone everywhere in the world. And we're yeah very, very excited that you're here with us today for the start. Um, so today we have uh, three amazing uh, speakers for you. We have Meng Chiu Wang, Priscilla Lambert, and Luke Ali. And uh, today we're going to talk a lot about sargassum. So we chose this topic for the Atlantic Ocean Basin session because sargassum is something that really touches both sides of the Atlantic. So maybe you've already heard of the Sargasso Sea, uh, which is a really vital ecosystem um, north of the Caribbean Sea. And it's also called the golden floating rainforest of the Atlantic. And that's because in this region, all life really depends on the sargassum, which is this, well, these floating seaweed mats. Um, and you've already seen in our introduction video that the sargassum can really be like a really big nuisance on some beaches, but like you can see in the diagram, it's also really important because it provides shelter and food for just a really huge uh, variety of different marine life. Um, and sargassum has been, uh, well, it was first reported in the 19th century. They reported these huge floating mats of sargassum. Um, but they were more kind of uh, limited and discontinued. But now, more recently, since 2011, they've been really expanding, um, becoming a lot more denser, and they actually formed what's called the Great Atlantic Sargassum Belt. So that's a really large area, about 8,850 kilometers long, really this belt that extends from West Africa to the Caribbean Sea. Um, and that's also the world's largest macroalgal bloom, Um, and well, it looks like these blooms might be kind of the new normal for us that we have to learn how to live with and to understand better. And that's why we have our speakers today, um, because they know a lot about sargassum and they can answer all the questions you might have. So if you do have specific questions, then um, you can ask them all throughout the next hour. You can just put your questions in the chat box. Um, but also we have something really great for you. I think it's really great. Um, and that's because afterwards you'll have the chance to directly talk with one of the speakers in the private room. So these are, um, well, this is only available for the people who are with us on Zoom right now. Um, so um, we'll organize three breakout rooms with one of the speakers 
So throughout the webinar, if you want, we'll ask you to register for one of the breakout rooms. Um, and uh, those rooms will also not be broadcasted. It's just a chance to really well get to talk with one of our speakers in more detail if you want to. Um, so keep that in mind as you listen to them. Um, and if you have maybe more specific questions that you would like to discuss. So uh, now we're going to start with our first speaker, who is Luke Ardi. And um, so Luke, I'm going to give the floor to you and maybe you can just present yourself a little bit and tell us uh, why you're, well, why you're interested in Sargassum. Sure. Um, first, a happy uh, World Ocean Day to everybody. Um, I'm a, um, I would say, adventurer, explorer, filmmaker, photographer, and traveler. I've done a lot of uh, research as a uh, environmental advocate for the last 20 years or so. I've traveled a lot and became interested in, first I started in the Arctic, Antarctica, and then became interested in the oceans and discovered the uh, issue of uh, Sargassum beyond the historical uh, Sargasso Sea about uh, not even two years ago. So this new issue, this new saga so see we're going to talk a lot about, uh, came to my attention uh, about two years ago, and I thought I should research that and do something uh, positive about it in a form of a uh, uh, exploration and uh, a documentary. And uh, we started with uh, Bertrand, uh, uh, our uh, director, and uh, François-Marie, our uh, a writer, we started to research the subject uh, early last year and started to uh, interact with uh, stakeholders, uh, mostly scientists at the beginning in the Caribbean, in Florida, and uh, did a trip in the context of the uh, uh, Sagasum uh, conference in Guadeloupe in October 2019. We started to film a few images uh, with a view to do a full size, full length uh, documentary, uh, which uh, uh, is still under development and filming and uh, should uh, uh, be available sometime next year. So I'd like to show you maybe a few of the first images. It's not even a trailer, it's just a few images of what we've uh, we started to film uh, in uh, Caribbean last year. And uh, maybe I'll comment a little bit as you, uh, as you launch uh, now and, uh, and we can talk more about, uh, about the issue uh, Surround the issues, many of them surrounding Sagasum. <laughs> we are now at the original beach line in 2015 before the Sagasum brown tide arrived. The Sagasum brown tide it eroded the beach between 10 and 20 meters. In the future, we don't know how much sargassum we're going to get because this is a new phenomenon and uh, we have only a few years of that. So we don't know what's going to happen with sargassum in the future, but it doesn't appear as if it's going to disappear anytime soon. But we need to take actions, considering like it's going to come again, no? So we need to be prepared. Because what has happened in previous years is that everybody's expecting next year we don't have sargassum, so they don't do anything and they begin being concerned until the moment they have huge quantities on the shore. And then it's too late. So the idea is really to um, try to cover all aspects of 
that's an issue from uh, research, uh, surveillance, uh, satellite uh, tracking, collection, transformation, the economic and social uh, impact as well, uh, even the artistic impact. Uh, we've uh, heard recently that pe people use it as a uh, medium of, uh, uh, of expression, uh, tourism, the legal issues, and uh, obviously fishing, uh, uh, commercial or local, uh, the health issues, which are very important. So it's a fascinating subject in a way because there is a lot of positive, a lot of negative, uh, and, uh, and it also uh, is a subject which is important for uh, the Caribbean, Florida, Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico, but also Africa. We don't talk much about Africa, but it's uh, the same problems we have in the Caribbean, they have in, uh, in uh, Africa, and it's important to, uh, to talk about these countries as well. Thank you, Luke. Thanks uh, so much for yeah that first um, presentation. I think that's kind of you said a lot of the reasons why we wanted to choose Sargassum for today as well because it, it touches on so many other um, aspects that are really important. And um, before we go over to our next speaker, uh, Yuna, my co-host, is going to explain to you how you can get into a breakout room with Luke later if you want to. Oh, you have to unmute yourself, Luna, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so if you're interested to talk to Luke uh, in a private session uh, after, uh, you just need to raise your hand in the participant box below and I will pre-sign you uh, to the private session later. So feel free to raise your hand. Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks, Yuna. And uh, like Luke already said, Research is definitely a really important part about sargassum because, uh, well, first we need to understand uh, what's what's going on um, before we can decide what we want to do about it. Um, so um, it's really my pleasure to introduce you to our next speaker, uh, who is Meng Chiu Wang. Um, and uh, yeah, she's been conducting a lot of the research about sargassum and is going to share with that uh, us with that now. Hello. Hello, everyone. So thanks very much for having me here to share my knowledge on the sarcasm detection using mostly satellite images. So my name is Meng Chiu Wang. I'm a postdoc researcher working with Dr. Chang Ming Hu at the University of South Florida College of Marine Science. Uh, in the past five years, I've been working on using satellite imagery to absorb this unique type of Marco algae. As introduced by Luke and Julia, there have been increasing amount of sargassum beaching events in the coastal areas of Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, West Africa, and even Florida. So it's been negatively impacting local ecosystem and environment, and also negatively impacting local economy as well. So facing such a demand of understanding, our knowledge are extremely limited. So therefore, I would like to use the power of satellite remote sensing to study questions like, where do the sargassum came from? Well, where are the sargassum distributed? How do they grow or die or move? And what are the potential impacts of different environmental conditions? So, and most importantly, how can we predict the future blooms events and also as well as the beaching events? So, uh, can, can, can you share the, the images, the satellite images? So, um, as, so as, in, as shown in this satellite, 10 meter resolution satellite images on the bottom and on, on up, up left. So the sargassum, will, under natural environment, sargassum often have highly patchy distributions. So which means we need a lot of observations to, with sufficient spatial and temporal coverages to fully understand it. Compared to the traditional shipboard investigations, Satellite imagery has a large, la much larger data coverage and may also review additional information like the physiology, physiological states, the biomass, the carbon, the pigments, etc. So having all these kind of advantages, how do we detect sargassum from space? From bare eye, we can easily tell that sargassum has brownish, yellowish color and form distinctive, distinctive clumps 
or long extending sargassum weed lines. But it's not an easy test to detect them on, a co on, on the satellite images, especially over, a, over the vast ocean, like the central West Atlantic. And the, and the top, left, top right is the satellite images showing the, uh, the, the one kilometer resolution satellite images uh, with some of the sargassum features. From the RGB normal, from the bell eye, we cannot tell the sargassum presence. But uh, because sargassum reflects, reflects the near infrared light much stronger than the nearby water, we can utilize these properties to locate the sargassum as, as indicated by this red and arrows showing on the, on, the, on the right of the panel. So after processing 20 years of satellite record, we have discovered there was a huge amount of sargassum that has been frequently occurring of, across the Central Atlantic Ocean, forming this gigantic belt zone that connected from all the way from West Africa to the Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico, Mexico, and even reaching Florida coast. And this is the work we have been working on for the past five years. And we are also trying to developing skills to making better prediction um, for the especially for the local beaches and we are still developing this kind of capacities and we are expecting those to be helpful for the local uh, management agencies as well as local residents and that's it <laughs> thanks a lot uh Meng Chiu, for really yeah walking us through how you do the detections for me at least it was super interesting because i yeah it's really great to just hear it directly from you and um Yuna is going to uh, take over again now. And uh, again, if you want to talk in one of our breakout rooms later. OK. Uh, yes, uh, if you want again to talk uh, to Mrs. Wang uh, right after uh, the event, well, you can. So please uh, raise your hand in the participant box below. And I will press on you. So don't hesitate. Um, Thanks, Yuna, and um, cool. I hope you're um, signing up for our breakout rooms. And um, I think both uh, Luke and Meng Chiu said, like, that um, I guess how important it is to really focus on, I guess, also the local beaches and to think about maybe what you can do with this or what this means, maybe for the local economy or, uh, well, local people. So I'm, I'm really happy that we have uh, Priscilla here with us today as our third speaker to tell us a little bit maybe about the um, opportunities or maybe how you can use sargassum. Um, yeah, so Priscilla, yeah, if you can tell us just a little bit about um, what you do and how you feel about this topic. Good morning, everybody. So thank you for inviting me today to discuss the subject of sargassum. My name is Lambert Priscilla, co-founder of the setup with the Marine Box. Startup which has been developing marine since June 2019. And our main objective is to transform the target from algae, which constitutes a raw material on which we can work. By tapping into this natural resource, the marine box extracts the alginate molecule present in the algae, is the algae in order to create a carbon-like biomaterial. Of course, the algae are treated so hard to avoid any health risk. The, the startup, we seek to counter the problem caused by the sargassum algae while developing a new local economy. In fact, as you already knew, know, each year since 20, 911, the West Indies knew of massive trending phenomena of floating brown sargassum, that algae that invade our beaches destroy biodiversity because of their toxicity and at the same time cause the dro a drop in tourist activity, therefore in the local economy. We all know that every problem has a solution, so why not? make this massive a river an acceptable resource. It therefore involves convincing local and international population to believe in the possibility of using this algae on a daily basis without them impacting 
health. There are the, there's are the vision of the marine birds uh, stick to country. A scientific vision with our collaboration in the safety project, one of the objectives of which to enhance the target and LG, and an economic vision with the manufacture of cardboard box and in particular the manufacture of coffin bases on sergesan intending for cremation. There's coffin which we have a patent on its design would therefore challenge the cardboard coffin correctly used. So I hope I have been able to enlighten you and bring you on all the necessary information concerning the activity of the marine box. But if you wish to have more information, I invite you to contact us via our Facebook page. So thank you for your attention, that's all. Thanks a lot, Priscilla. I think that's, um, that's really cool. And um, I at least have definitely a, a few questions. I'd love to hear more um, in our Q&A session soon. Um, but before, again, Yuna is going to give you the chance to sign up to talk more with Priscilla um, in one of the breakout rooms. Uh, yes. So if you're interested to talk to Priscilla, you can raise your hand and I will pre-sign you. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, like I said, now we've heard, um, I think, a really good kind of introduction from all of our speakers. But um, as I said, we want to um, make today really interactive. So um, we're going to, um, for the second part of this webinar, we're actually going to have our Q&A session. So um, if you haven't already, you can put your questions uh, in the chat box and then we'll um, go through them and uh, yeah, hear from all of the speakers what they have to say. But before that, we actually have a, a great little video for you. Um, so if you want, you can also use this time to um, yeah, put in your questions in the chat box and I'll see you after the video. Ce sont pour se sauver la vie. Donc, on est tout gras et dégueulasse. Sur la peur d'être blanche. Mais des hommes, même pas efficaces. Range ton 
Thanks for playing the video for us. And um, I hope you're all ready now to um, yeah, have some questions and answers, both uh, speakers and uh, of other participants. Um, like I said, if you have questions, put them in the chat and send them to Yuna at best directly. Um, and we, uh, someone already sent me their first question that I'm going to start off with. Um, but like I said, we really have <clears throat> the second half of this webinar now to talk about uh, what's interesting for all of you. So I'm gonna start off with the first question from the audience. And the question is, if the speakers know anything about any existing projects that try to use sargassum to sequester carbon to mitigate climate change. Um, so, um, okay, I see Luke uh, has, um, yeah, why don't you start, Luke, um, by giving us your perspective. Uh, yes, we, we, do know of some uh we've uh, filmed a little bit in uh, in uh, uh, florida you know people using it for uh fertilizer um we've heard that there is uh someone an entrepreneur in nigeria who's been apparently active in uh, western africa sierra leone nigeria ivory coast to to try to do the same to do the same thing um we are off uh, this summer to uh, Hello? We have to the Caribbean again in uh, in uh, Saint Lucia and Martinique, of course, as well. But in Saint Lucia, there is also an entrepreneur who is uh, who is uh, doing that. So there are several uh, entrepreneurship startup projects which are um, either are starting or, or or continuing to develop solutions to collect, capture the uh, sagasum and uh, transform it in uh, in some way, including fertilizer but it can also be uh, bricks for construction can be a whole lot of different uh, uses cool thank you yeah that's um, actually one of the things i was wondering about now we heard mostly perspectives i guess from the caribbean um what the situation would be like in in west africa for example um for this question um i wonder if if they also meant in terms of sequestering carbon in terms of carbon credits or anything like that? Do you know if there's any projects like that? That, that, that I've not heard of, okay. but uh, certainly would be uh, quite interesting to research. And uh, I should say we are at the beginning of our project and there are so many dimensions in this project of, uh, uh, about uh, Sagasun that uh, we're happy to learn and be contacted with uh, ideas and solutions. Um, and I hope that if there's people with solutions and ideas in the audience, that they're going to be in your breakout room later so <laughs> they can share uh, more of them, hopefully. And thanks, uh, unless uh, Meng Cho or Priscilla, if you would like to add something. Um, no, okay, then um, I think Yuna has another question for us from the audience, uh, right Yuna? Uh, yes, I had a question uh, because uh, Luke, you mentioned uh, fertilizer. So I've got a question. What are the prospects for energy production and fertilizer with sargassum, according to you? Well, again, it's what we've observed and heard. I don't have a solution, even though I'm a, a scientist. I'm here, the candid kind of exploring what, what's going on and the, what's going to happen in the future. But we've definitely seen uh, people collecting sargassum and transforming it. We've been into, you know, little plants, um, uh, which are doing exactly that. Now there are some issues um, in um, 
you know, in the Caribbean with a chlordecone, which is this uh, particular uh, pollutant which uh, stays uh, almost forever in uh, in the environment, uh, especially in, in, in the sagasum. Uh, there are also the plastics issue, there is the arsenic issue, there is a heavy metal issue, uh, because all these tend to collect uh, into sagasum. So it's not, you know, that easy to uh, find uh, solutions which are uh, especially connected with uh, the food chain. So it, it, it seems to be in effervescence and people uh, think about it, are doing some things about it, projects, starting projects, but uh, it's, I think we're at the, uh, really at the beginning of a uh, possible solutions from, from what we've seen. Yeah, that seems to be really, I guess, a tricky question. And I wonder, um, Priscilla, what's your perspective on this? I know you, you talked about the marine box producing cardboard from Sargasso mainly, but have you also looked into other, like a uh, fertilizer or some of the things that Luke mentioned now? Maybe she's not hearing you, Priscilla. I don't know, Priscilla, can you, um, can you hear me well still? Or, ah. Maybe you were just muted. Yeah, I was just curious what your, um, if you also have any experience with that or um, apart from the cardboard production that you're doing. Oh, shit. Oh, you're still muted. If so. Ah. Now I think we can hear you. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, there are other companies working on the transformation of Sargassum seaweed into paper. We we were able to meet them during the Sargasso, which took in place in Guadeloupe in October 2019. Uh, there are other there are other companies who work on the Saragas. For example, there is a company in Barbados that have developed a range of sargassum based care projects. And in Mexico also they they work on bricks. Well so there are different ways to use and improve sargassum. Yeah, and I guess uh, every one of them is probably a very specialized thing that it needs a lot of time to get into, but that's really, um, yeah, really interesting. And um, um, I just, um, someone from the audience just sent me another question. Um, and the question is, how do we balance communicating the importance of sargassum in the marine ecosystem with the issue of sargassum strandings? And I wonder, um, Meng Chiu, if maybe you would like to comment on that because um, I guess that's that's been a big, I guess, part of your research now has been communicating um, or making, well, about the bells and how it's different from what was there before. So, yeah, I wonder how you feel about that. Um, actually, I think, um, I think during a lot of in communication, we overemphasize a lot of information that how bad it is, but we didn't put too, too much effort in telling people it is a good stuff in, in open ocean. Um, and I feel like because we are more concentrated in the coastal areas, uh, I think it's, it's very difficult for us to, to emphasize that to the, to the general public because it is, it is impacting their life for real. <laughs> But in the, in, the, in the coastal in the coastal areas, that's that's their priority to remove them from the beaches. Uh, but uh, I think maybe we have to still do more research or have more conclusive conclusive uh, conclusions to make the the general audience to be aware of the in the the, the, the ecosystem rules. Uh, actually, I think um, maybe from the remote sensing perspective, all this kind of information will help us understand in their, their role in open ocean as well. Uh, uh, actually, I have been doing some research. Uh, I, I should have commented this on the, on, the, on the initial question. So I have done some research on the sargassum carbon as well. So we have making some estimations and uh, 
total sargassum biomass in, in the open ocean, and that's huge. That's a lot of carbon. So there's a lot of um, uh, carbon sequestered by sargassum and, and potentially can sink into the deep ocean. So there's a lot of mysterious things uh, that still need to be explored in the future. I guess maybe um, for the coastal regions, we need to, we still, we have, we're, we're facing these issues. We have to put a lot of efforts on making predictions and on how to prevent the sargassum beaching to happen uh, or to how to make use of them. But in the open ocean, we still need to have more data, especially using the remote sensing as a, as a great tool to understand their ecological benefits. Yeah, and I... Uh, yeah, I, I saw Luke that probably, and I already thought that probably the first topic is the question of how to balance, I guess, the importance of the ecosystem with the other past is probably one of the key questions for your documentary as well. Yeah, yes, for sure. But I also wanted to emphasize that uh, based on the great work that scientists like uh, Wing Chu are, uh, 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 are doing, there, there is communication to the general public and uh, obviously coastal areas and uh, the tourism business, uh, the fishing business, uh, fishing industry, um, uh, especially in, uh, you know, Barbados, the uh, CMS is doing uh, great work in publishing this uh, bulletin, which uh, basically shows what is happening in, almost in real time and predicts what's going to happen. Uh, so people at least can have a sense of what they they can do or not do uh, in the uh, following weeks or, or, or months. Uh, so the uh, I wanted to uh, mention that uh, make sure because the research you do and the satellite stuff you do can look like very complicated and far away, but it actually helps people, uh, you know, do their work and plan what. Uh, what they can do or not do uh, locally and very locally, you know, especially in these islands of the Caribbean and, uh, and Africa as well. And um, in terms of the, the documentary aspect, then I guess how how do you um, how do you plan on on balancing maybe like communicating the importance versus uh, showing the this well the issue for the coastal communities and the problems that it causes? Yeah, we we we're definitely gonna going to discuss that uh, and again we are you know not even halfway through our research work but um, they are well so I assume as and uh, scientists are better placed than me to to say that but is a natural ecosystem so I guess OC has been there for you know centuries if not millenniums um, so and it's a lot of uh, life and uh, species of uh, fish and crabs and turtles come to nest there. So it's a great uh, ecosystem. Even the new Sargasso Sea that uh, we saw on the uh, on the uh, Mengshu's map uh, it serves also that uh, that purpose. So uh, definitely there will be a balance between uh, e even assuming that we could uh, eradicate all Sargassum in the ocean, we wouldn't want to do that. Um, so there is a kind of a intelligent, smart equilibrium to find there and that we will uh, discuss with our, uh, you know, various stakeholders and uh, whether they are uh, uh, fishermen. But uh, for example, you know, I think it was in Grenada, we interviewed uh, a fisherman and we would think that, you know, fishermen, local fishermen uh, hate Sargassum because it blocks their uh, their boats, so uh, they cannot get out of the uh, harbor to go fishing, and uh, and they get caught in the propellers and uh, and all that. But actually, some fishermen were, in a way, happy, quote unquote, with the new phenomenon because they could fish different kind of a uh, uh, fish and a more interesting kind of fish because of the changes that the uh, sagasum have uh, created in their in their in their environment. I mean, that was still a it was a minority, but still you could see like anything which has to do also with uh, with uh, climate change, which might be partially, you know, responsible for all these new uh, developments. Uh, th there might be a silver lining for uh, for some people, uh, fortunately or unfortunately. Yeah, I guess that's really the challenge we have maybe in general as an ocean community. How do we communicate how 
severe the problems are while also highlighting good solutions and things that give people hope because otherwise it's very difficult I feel for, for any of us to do what we do and on that I was also wondering Priscilla what is the like I guess perception of like the community where you're working of the sargassum I mean it sounds like you found a, a I mean a positive way how to use it but um, do, do you think people as well how do they see the importance of like the sargassum ecosystem for example in, in Martinique in Martinique um, people think sargassum are very are, are, are a very environmental problems because they can they can they can um, um, they can uh, really uh, In Martinique, it's a very, it's a, salads are a very um, environmental problem because people can, um, they can, they can, they can they can live normally the, um, the activity the tourist activity is um is, well, the, the the tourist activity is um i guess maybe yeah. it sounds like it's a little um, bit what Mong Cho was saying that it is a really big problem more than um, or maybe harder to to appreciate if you have to if you have all the negative consequences from it. And I guess um, this leads a, a little bit to the next question that someone sent me, which was um, if the sargassum density increases at a specific time uh, of the year. And I I wonder I guess Meng Cho you. Probably know you the most of the about the density for us. Um, yeah, yeah, that's my specialty. <laughs> so, um, Sahara Sargassum, especially in the central West Atlantic and also the Caribbean Sea, has very strong seasonalities. Oftentimes, we see a lot of bit of Sargassum initiated in the central West Atlantic, at the general area, and then setting from maybe early December and the growth weight will increase a lot and all the way through maybe early summer. So that's the period that sargassum tend to grow a lot. And the maximum density typically occur during the summer. Um, and there, there could be some interannual variations, uh, but mostly it will have the maximum density around maybe June to August. And then the sargassum started to dissipate and, and degrade and decay and sinking into the, in the ocean bottom. Yeah. So that's the general pattern. In some of the occasions, may, they may have slightly difference due to the physical transport, the, con the convergence. But the general patterns over the entire tropical Atlantic uh, follows that pattern almost every year. Okay, thanks for, for explaining that in so much detail for us. And also off the top of your head, um, yeah. Um, Yuna, I think you have some more questions um, from, uh, so some more questions from the audience uh, for us, right? Uh, yes, I, uh, I received many questions, so thank you for that. Um, so an, an, an interesting one, uh, so does Sagasum is related uh, with uh, marine plastic pollution and global warming or not? So it's a general question from the audience. Anyone could uh, answer. Um, yeah, that's I think I may like... comment on something. 
yeah, I think that's probably, uh, you probably all have a lot to say about this question. So sure, why don't you yeah, start? Um, uh, so actually just a little bit, not too much. <laughs> So uh, I, it's, it's, it's very difficult to say, to comment on um, what it impacts to the um, global warming, those old kind of things, because it's, it is, um, it is, ocean is very complicated and the, it, all the kind of responses is very convoluted. And, but we have seen evidence to, 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 to suggesting that the, 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 the ocean circulation uh, all the environmental changes might be related to this kind of blooming phenomena, especially happening across the Central Atlantic. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah, and I think, Luke, you also... Uh, oh, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, say the same thing, not, not not, not as well, but that the, uh, the, the there's some direct impact probably, and I'm like you, uh, make sure from what we hear, it's everybody's prudent in blaming climate change uh, as a cause, whatever percentage that would be of the Sagasum phenomenon. But there, there might be some direct, just to raise the possibilities, there might be some direct impact be, just because of the water temperature might be because indirect uh, the impact of climate change on the circulation of currents. Uh, currents uh, might then bring more nutrients in an area or another, and these nutrients in turn feed the sagasum. So as you say, it's very complicated and different causes. And we, I think it's fair to say that nobody knows yet, but there is a lot of uh, great research uh, uh, being, being done. And the plastic, yeah, I mean, uh, anything which is floating on the ocean is going to catch sooner or later some plastic. And Sagasum are doing exactly that. They capture plastic, which then degrades and, uh, in you know, smaller pieces and might uh, get into the Sagasum itself somehow and, and end up in... Uh, you know, on the, on beaches and in these fertilizers and whatever uses we, we make of them. Yeah. I think that's uh, yeah really interesting that we are now linking to those really big topics that I feel like uh, probably many people on uh, World Ocean Day are, are thinking and talking about today, probably. And, Meng, Shu uh, has a, Meng Shu, you wanted to say something? Yeah, yeah. I, have, oh. I tried to raise my hand. Um, okay, so I, I, I forgot to mention the, uh, the plastic thing. So, um, one of the interesting things is, is that uh, the difference between sargassum and plastic is that plastic is not a live stuff and sargassum is a live stuff. But actually they have very similar patterns observed from the, from the satellite, from the, from the general perspective. So they always, uh, it is actually observed that uh, the places where much of the sargassum gathers, it, will, it also will also have some chances to for the plastic to gather. So they are also connected somehow. Yeah, so there are some, there have been some studies showing the plastic distributions and, and it's very similar. And some of them, it, you know, uh, con converged in the, in the, in, in the Northern Atlantic gyre region, where that's the Sargasso Sea. <laughs> So I, I just thought that might be interesting to discuss, to, 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 to tell the audience. Thanks for adding that. I, oh, I see you're raising your hand, Luke, but I'm okay. uh, trying to, um, okay. I guess I was just about to maybe wrap up the Q&A part of, um, mm -hmm. of our webinar now to kind of get ready to move into the breakout rooms. Um, but thanks for adding that last point, Ming Chu. I think that is really interesting um, to know because yeah, like you said, all these, these are, I mean, um, Sargassum, I guess, is the Atlantic topic that we're talking about, but it's also linking to other um, kind of global ocean topics that I think lots of people are talking and thinking about today. Um, and um, yeah, thanks so much for all your questions. I know there were, I think, many more questions, um, but uh, this is why you have the chance now to ask them in the, in the breakout rooms and get your answers directly and also clarify maybe some more of the details. Um, 
So I think Yuna has, is going to give us an update on the state of the breakout rooms where we still have some free spots. Uh, yes, so we've got uh, some free spots uh, with uh, Luke Hardy. So if you're interested to talk to him, please uh, raise your hand and I will assign you. Thank you. Cool, thank you. Um, thank you, Yuna. So, um, yeah, you still have, a, I guess, a few minutes now to, um, to decide if anyone would like to, uh, to join the session with Luke. Um, and it's, it's interesting that uh, we talked a lot about actually carbon uh, storage now in part of our Q&A session, because one of the things that I had planned for our wrap up is actually talking about also some new research um, that showed that the floating sargassum totals about 7.5 gigatons of carbon in the Atlantic. So that is, a re like Meng Cho was already saying, I guess, really significant amount of carbon compared to other marine ecosystems, even I mean, mangrove forests, salt marshes, or seagrass meadows, kind of the, I guess, the ecosystem that are currently investigated for kind of blue carbon opportunities. Um, but yeah, I guess also, like you said, we need to just find out a lot more about it. And I guess also the fact that sargassum is concentrated really in the open ocean makes it a lot harder to study probably than many of these other ecosystems that are coastal. Um, and also what, what Priscilla was saying, it sounds like we have a really, there are many good ideas for how we can deal with the negative consequences, how we can make use of the sargassum, but it also sounds like um, there's a lot more, more potential to, to really figure out how it works and maybe also how we can make sure to avoid some of those negative consequences that Luke was talking about, like the heavy metals or accumulation through the food chain, depending on what we want to use the sargassum for. So um, I think, uh, to me, I think it was really great to hear from all of you because it really, I guess, tied together so many different, um, different uh, aspects across the Atlantic. And um, so we do have a few minutes. So if you want each of the three of you to make kind of a, I guess, a closing statement, if you, um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave that open to you, whatever you feel like you maybe still want to say to the audience before we move into the breakout rooms. Um, ladies, sure, ladies would you first. Like to start? Oh, or, okay, Luke, would you like to start? <laughs> no, no, I was saying ladies first. Oh, okay, great. Well then, thank you. <laughs> uh, um, I guess maybe I would just say satellite is a critical tour and we still have a lot of unknowns about sargassum and and also we have some amazing tours from Uni University of South Florida College of Marine Science. We have an optical oceanography lab. We provided uh, monthly sargassum prediction bulletins to the Caribbean Sea to all of the, to the general public. So uh, if anybody was interested, maybe you can look for our information on the website. That's it. <laughs> cool, thank you. That sounds uh, super interesting. And um, yeah, thank you. And uh, then I guess ladies, ladies first still. Um, Stella, would you also like to yeah, make kind of a, I guess, closing statement? Um, no. Um, Mm, I I I can say so with the various environmental problems that the world is currently experiencing, it's important to use biomass as a primary resource in order to minimize the use of fossil research. So sargassum is an excellent example because it's very exploitable. This is why we should, we should not necessarily be seen as a surge, but as, as an opportunity to design new, more ecological materials. Yeah, I think um, that is, I guess, one of the really interesting things about sargassum that it has so much potential, like what you've been, yeah, starting to to use. Um, and 
uh, yeah, thanks. so then, well, thank you. And uh, Luke, would you like to? Uh, yeah, well, thanks again for uh, organizing uh, this, uh, very uh, useful and uh, thanks to, to the speakers. Especially, uh, make sure thank you for uh, re receiving us uh, in uh, last October in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, and uh, helping us in our research. Uh, what you do with the satellite work and uh, is uh, really great. We, we also uh, work with the CLS in France, we, who's been uh, helping with uh, satellite uh, mapping and viewing and prediction, and uh, all this work is really fantastic. No, I mean, uh, again, uh, I kind of have a, a call for the uh, Sargassum community at large, uh, whether you are in, you know, research or fishing or local, uh, scientist, uh, startup, uh, government, uh, legal, uh, if you think that what you're doing would be of interest for our documentary, which uh, hopefully will be uh, comprehensive and uh, look at all the aspects of the uh, Sagasum issue, please. Uh, uh, contact me. I mean, I was redrawn into this project. It's uh, fascinating. Uh, we're still learning well, at the beginning. There's some positives, some negatives. It affects the poor, the rich. Uh, it's an ocean issue. It's a land issue. It's a Caribbean issue and an African issue. There's a great uh, history to it. What the future will be like. It talks about uh, climate change or some uh, mystery with the eels reproduction in the Sargasso Sea. Uh, it's just a fascinating subject when you uh, when you think about it, and it's going to be hard to fit in uh, 52 minutes, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> Thank you. I think Thank that was a, um, a really great little, I guess, summary um, of all of our sargassum. I, I love that. Um, so uh, thanks so much to everyone again. And now we're going to move into um, the breakout rooms. So um, just a little, um, the way this is going to work is, um, we're going to uh, allow you to, uh, all the participants, to unmute yourselves and also to turn on your video uh, when we're in the breakout rooms. Um, so we have a last little video that we'll play for you now. Um, and during the video, you're going to get an invite link that invites you to join the, the breakout rooms. Um, so it will say a conversation with the speaker that you registered for. Um, and uh, then you have yeah, 30 minutes with, with your speaker. And then we're going to close this webinar for everyone who was following us along on Facebook or for everyone who's not going into one of the breakout rooms. Just, yeah, thanks so much for, for coming on um, and for, well, celebrating with us today. Um, yeah, like I said, we're really excited because today was the, yeah, the first series of events from the, uh, the virtual blue decade. Um, we're going to, have an event for each of the uh, ocean basins. So we also have an event on for the Pacific uh, Ocean Basin. Um, yes, so um, if you're still interested uh, later today, you can get some more of us or of the Virtual Blue Decade. And yeah, thanks a lot for, um, for coming on today and I uh, hope you have fun in the breakout rooms. La plage de Viard, envahie par les sargasses, à quelques heures du départ, c'est sans doute l'image du jour. Presque tous les habitants du littoral disent souffrir de gènes respiratoires. Moi je dis, il faut trouver les pollueurs. Monsieur Macron, on souffre à Capesterre. Sur le bord de mer, les pelleteuses financées par la mairie sont là. Et vous avez vu, on va y avoir ça au gâteau. En tout petit, c'est comme si on s'y bouette. C'est comme si on va mettre un moun avant bouette la vie de sargasse. Elle ramasse inlassablement des centaines de kilos de sargasse au quotidien. Donc faites quelque chose parce que nous sommes des Français ici, apparemment. Sargasla, la 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 Sarga, je mettrai dans mon charbet coco. Ça sentit. Ou sargasse. Ou l'air. Ou sargasse. Ou mêlée. Trois 
Je vais les pêcher J'ai mon marché tu bas Pour pas prendre le désir Petite flatulence Oups merde J'ai pété Kébéda Sorgas qu'à faire coucou d'été Qui a pété Ça va sortir tout l'été Oui tout l'été Nous pas qu'à y baigner de l'eau Sorgas je mettrai dans mon sorbet coco Gold droite Sorgas qu'à faire coucou d'été Qui a pété Ça va sortir tout l'été Oui tout l'été Nous pas qu'à y baigner de l'eau Sorgas je mettrai dans mon Hi, Level Studio.